Hello there all, Kate back here and welcome, welcome to this channel. We are back in my beloved Switzerland and today we're visiting a beautiful, wonderful and very much underrated canton Argo. Argo has very rich history, hilltop and lakeside castles just a few kilometers away from each other, all of which tell the history of Switzerland and its conquerors from all over Europe. So certainly worth a visit. Most of these landmarks, as I said, very, very close to each other and can be easily visited within a few days. Some of the castles offer pretty gardens, terraces, vineyards, while others are close to historical town centers, are located on idyllic lakes, yet others hold rehabilitation facilities for juvenile offenders. Very interesting. More about that later. So, but most importantly, Argau is actually a home to the very first Swiss capital city, city of Aarau. Again, more about that later. So starting our journey with Arburg Castle, one of the many castles in the canton of Argo. It's located high above the town of Arburg on the steep rocky hillside. Absolutely stunning. The castle was built around earlier medieval castle, which controlled the narrow point of our river and served as the seat of Arburg governor. It is classified as Swiss heritage of national significance. The exact year of construction is unknown, however, probably was built around 1200s by Lords of Beuron. The castle was extended several times, in several stages, as you can clearly see from eclectic architecture. The first rebuilding took place in 1470, subsequent in 16th century, especially large ones in 17th century that led to creation of huge Baroque structures. In 1804, the newly created canton of Argau took over the castle, initially served as arsenal and barracks for soldiers. Then from 1826 to 1864 was actually a prison, which does remind, reminded me of the prison, especially from this side. And then canton and parliament decided in 1891 to establish an institution for juvenile criminals and squanderals. Opened in 1893, this compulsory education institution was the first of its kind in Switzerland. In 1917, the building was extended. Initially, system focused on very, very harsh discipline, order and punishment. I guess like many things in 20th century. Then in 1930s, governing philosophy shifted towards education and reform. In 89, it became youth home, reflecting the changing objectives from order and punishment to philosophy of education and reform. And now only 20 minutes away, we're arriving to a beautiful, stunning city of Arau, which I would remind you was the first Swiss capital. More about it in just a moment. So Arau was founded by Counts of Kyberg. The first mention of the settlement takes place somewhere in 1200s, 1248 it was mentioned as Arauve, and around 1250 was mentioned as Arauva. The town was ruled from the Rohr Tower, which is today incorporated into a modern city hall. In 1273, the Counts of Kyberg died out, and Agnes of Kyberg, who had no male relations to inherit, sold the family's land to King Rudolf I von Habsburg, who granted Arau its city rights in 1283. In 14th century, the city was expanded in two separate stages, and the second defensive wall was constructed. A very interesting fact. A very deep ditch was separating the city from its suburbs. In location of this ditch today is a very wide street that is named Graben, and Graben means ditch. In 1415, Bern invaded Lower Argau. Arau capitulated after a short resistance, being much, much weaker than Bern. It was forced to swear allegiance to the new rulers, and in 16th century, the rights were taken away, and in March 1528, Protestantism was introduced. In spite of the capitulation, the city continued to grow and develop, especially during the 16th century, that led to taller buildings, denser construction methods, and roughly at that time, the beautiful old town that we see today was built. Early forms of industry are developing at this time. However, unlike in most cities in Arau, there were no guilds. 
Starting in early 18th century, the textile industry was established in Aarau. Interestingly enough, German immigrants drew leading the way. They greatly contributed to the development of the city, introducing cotton and silk factories. These highly educated immigrants also were responsible for educational reform and the best practices of enlightenment, bringing a revolutionary spirit to Aarau. Small castle that you see right now, named Schlossli, remained here nearly unchanged since 13th century. It's the oldest building in the city, it was founded roughly at the time of the foundation of the city, and today hosts a city museum. I absolutely insist, my dear friends, that you look up while strolling around the town. Aro is unique for its remarkable site, gables. So what are those gables? Gables are basically the triangular part uh, of the roof that is sticking out and is visible from below sort of a roof's underside, if I may. It's very easy to spot them. It's really worth going closer, looking up and seeing them from beneath. The gables are unique to the city of Aral. Around the old town, there will be 70 buildings with gables and beautiful paintings, each of them unique, and pretty much each deserves attention. Aarau is the capital of the canton Aargau in Swiss Mittelland, which means middle land, which is in the pretty much correctly describing it's in the very middle of Switzerland, located on the river Aar, which gave town and canton their names. Description of Aarau is located in the southern foot of Jura foothills, in the center of the big city triangle of Zurich, Basel and Luzern. Importance of Aarau's central location was recognized early on, which is why Drum rolls! Arrow for a brief moment, a few months, in 1798 was Switzerland's first capital and home to Switzerland's first houses of parliament. Very few people know that, but Arrow, in fact, for a few brief months, was the first capital of Switzerland. However, briefly, it doesn't matter, was the first capital of Switzerland nonetheless. Today, Arrow is a place of art lovers with many great museums and wonderful concerts that I was lucky and grateful and honored to participate in. One of my friends was performing and the music was absolutely amazing. But to truly understand Aro and its people, you have to see them enjoying themselves in one of the many unique festivals of Argao. So come to one of the local historical traditional events, such as Mainzu, which is in translation sort of roughly May procession, which takes, play, which takes place naturally in July. <laughs> um, so the next May procession will take place on July 7th, 2023 when just imagine these streets that you're seeing right now will be transformed with hundreds of children with flowers will transform the city streets into the sea of flowers and joy and laughter so it's one of the most beautiful largest ara children's and youth festival that is inspiring that has been going on here for over 400 years so certainly worth a visit and of course, don't forget we are in Switzerland, so stunning mountains, hills, hiking trails, cycling trails are within an easy ride on the cable car or by hiking if you're strong enough on food or cycling all the way up. There's stunning, stunning places just within 20, 30, 40 minutes ride. So certainly if you get tired of this city, have a day of hiking, go to Jura Mountains. They're very close, like we're pretty much on the foothills of the Jura Mountains here. So many, many stunning places are within an easy ride from here. Thank you so much for joining. It was a pleasure to have you. Hope you enjoyed the video, hope it was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to put the like. Check out my other content about Switzerland, take a look in the description down below, check out in the links that appear up 
here in the right corner somewhere. Thank you so much for joining and see you soon.